For those who are new or unfamiliar with my content, I would like to give a disclaimer. Slow Damage has an extremely self-destructive main character, and his nonchalant comments about his lack of concern for himself does trigger my nervous laughter. If you'd like to view my content that covers darker and triggering subjects like this one, please consume it responsibly and know that this content is not for minors. I want to emphasize that if you experience any of the severe symptoms that Toa does, I highly encourage that you seek professional help rather than view this playthrough. Good evening, and welcome back to Slow Damage, part 19! Man, this, this is a long journey. Um, okay, it's been a long journey, and um, we finally, finally met Madarame. Um, <laughs> And oh boy, what a wild ride he is. Um, <laughs> and not in the sexy way, at least not yet, I'm assuming. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. This chapter has had me buck wild. Also doesn't help that I've been um, quite tired while playing this route. Um, that's nobody's fault but my own, but um, <laughs> I think the tiredness just added to me just like... Um, being more immersed than I usually am. Because <laughs> also with Taku and Raised Out, for the most part, it was like, yeah, I would get shocked during the uh, supposedly supposed to be shocking parts, but Mararame is like buck wild. Like, but, you know, and I, I know they like warned me about it. Like, you know, they were foreshadowing it. They're like, Mararame is buck wild and I'm just like okay but it's like I just like was surprised Pikachu faced the moment Madarame was just like hey I came back for you because I like you but also whoop and then just starts beating up Toa and I'm like I'm having flashbacks dude like and again like Toa said in their case Toa's like sort of down with it because he's just like well Madarame kind of understands me on that level and I'm like He's not saying words, Toa. I mean, he is saying words, but also he's just like, he'll say something and then like unrelated will just smack you in the head. And I'm like, I'm so confused. Like, are you sure this dude likes you? <laughs> I, I, I'm sure everything will be explained. I'm just... This game really is slow damage. It really does live up to its name, whether <laughs> regardless of what the damage is, you know. Anyway, <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, um, this episode we're gonna try to go the distance, baby. We're gonna try and get a good chunk of this route done. We're gonna make it happen. We all, we all. I don't know if we're gonna get Toa out of there. I'm, I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. I'm, I'm quite afraid. Um, you know, especially because we have left Taku and Rei to their own devices as well. So, um, Taku apparently, um, from the implications that Madarame is implying, well, that's so redundant. Um, from, from what Madarame is implying, Taku is, has probably made that, that weird zombie drug that um that he refused to make slash sabote and toa sabotaged in his route um because in in Ray's route they didn't really talk about it from what i remember 
Like, I, because Ray, Ray was the important one in that, in, in his own route, so I think they didn't really care about the drugs. So, um, it was more so the assault parties, but now we're in Madarame's route where there's the assault parties and the drug and Madarame. You know, so, uh, what do you call it? Triple feature, triple creature, horror feature type of vibes. So, okay. Let's continue before I lose my mind, um, and we don't even start. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna eat before this, but you know, I was just like, you know what? Let's just, let's just go for it. And once I get really hungry, that's when I'll stop. <laughs> oh, mercy. Ooh, oh gosh, here we go. Also, this is District 8. I'm, where did Mata, sorry, I, I meant to be like, let's start, but where did Madarame go? Apparently it's been years. Madarame was just like, I'm just gonna bounce and then come back because, you know, feeling a little silly, miss toe a bit, you know, I'm just like, what is going on? You know, tell me, to and you know, like Toa said, it's just like, he doesn't, Madarame is like one of the, is like the only person that he cannot psychologically like dominate. Um, Madarame is like very mentally like like not sound because he's not mentally sound. He's far too mentally strong to uh, be influenced by like Toa's usual um, interrogation. So I'm I'm quite curious to see how we're gonna get out of here if Toa cannot, you know, push at Madarame's buttons because it seems like Madarame doesn't really have any, and he's just rogue I don't know how we're gonna get out of here. Let's go <laughs> The next day I was able to maintain a vague sense of time through the rising and setting of the sun. Yeah, that would that would get you Madarami stayed in the room with me either drinking smoking or looking at his phone. So they're not even talking <laughs> Judging from the portable power banks on the table. He had to have a supplier on the outside not like we were stranded on a deserted island. He was free to go into town and acquire whatever resources he needed. Sometimes he would wander out of the room, but I didn't try to make a break for it. Instead of being reckless, I needed to wait for the right moment. I was never the kind of person who could hold on to a grudge. I wanted to escape, sure, but I was exhausted to discover this obsession Madarame apparently had with me. Furthermore, the lack of TV or any other ambient noise was stressing me out. I didn't notice it at all yesterday since I was so busy trying to escape. But once I became aware of the silence, it started to feel like I was suffocating. Oh yeah, he has mad PTSD, so if he can't get- <laughs> I guess- I guess- uh, okay, so I guess Toa needs those like ambient um, noises to kind of like calm down because he has constant nightmares, right? So, um, oh boy, this is- Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, I don't see anything good happening here. Okay, anyway. <laughs> that being said, I wasn't about to ask Madarame to remedy the situation. As a distraction, I sat against the wall with my knees under my chin and thought to myself. The memory of Tapu passed out in the alley came to mind. What happened to him after that? Did he wake up and call for help? Did someone find him? Did Taku know Madarame was the, cult was the culprit? Either way, without tracking Madarame, no one would ever find this place. Not that I wanted anyone to come rescue me. At the same time, being trapped in this perfectly silent room was akin to torture. I couldn't let the silence get to me. I needed to keep thinking, even if I didn't want to. I gripped my knees tightly to hide the fact that my hands were starting to shake. Then, out of nowhere, my vision went dark. Oh. Oh. The next thing I knew, Madarame was standing right in front of me. I hadn't even felt him approach. I passed out. I had no way of knowing how much time had passed, but I must have fallen unconscious. I mean, Makes sense. <laughs> I stared back at him firmly, hoping to hell he wouldn't notice that I was sweating bullets. Scowling, he set something down in front of me. Food! 
<laughs> Literally a bagel and like a mini baguette. I wonder if it has cream cheese inside. Those are always tasty. I'm trying to cut down on bread. It's very sad for me, but the water what that water looks real good though. <laughs> Pastries and a bottle of water. Mm. Toad doesn't like eating though. <laughs> Dismally, I looked at my rations and turned away. I wasn't hungry. But even if I was dying of hunger or thirst, I had no intention of taking his charity. This is my one way of fighting back against him for withholding my right to die. <laughs> he looked at me in silence for a moment, then he crouched down. Grab a pastry and open the plat. Oh, is he gonna force feed to He's gonna force feed to He raised it to my mouth and pressed it firmly against my closed- Oh! Pressed it against my firmly closed lips. Cool. He doesn't like to eat, Madarame. <laughs> when I didn't budge, he grabbed me by the jaw. Ow. Then, he forced my teeth open and attempted to wedge the entire pastry in through the gap. I whipped my head to the side in protest, and the pastry fell to the floor. Glaring at him, I spat on the ground. <gasps> he stared down at me, then punched me in the- Why? This is not gonna make him eat. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> the impact made my vision flash. As I hung my head, Madarame gazed at me for a while, and eventually he lost interest and left the room. At that point, the silence returned. I buried my face against my knees and closed my eye. My cheek felt hot and swollen in the spot where he punched me. I could taste copper in my tongue. I had no intention of taking orders from Madarame. If he wanted to get mad and beat me to death, then so be it. In fact, he could go right ahead. I kept thinking about that go back and I'll set you free comment. I still couldn't figure it out. Oh, is he talking about the gang? My my memory is really blurry like Toa's right now. <laughs> no, well not as bad as Toa's, but if I didn't go back, I'd be stuck in this situation forever. Maybe I couldn't commit, but perhaps I could starve to death. <laughs> Doa. No eating, no drinking. I wanted to be relieved of this life, ASAP. Nothing more, nothing less. Slow damage. Oh boy. <laughs> oh gosh. Ugh. What a time. What a time we're having here. We're gonna be here a while. Once the sun had risen high in the sky, Malarame headed out somewhere. Naturally, I wasn't informed of the details. Forcing my fuzzy brain to cooperate, I slowly looked around the empty room. The lack of food and water made my body feel heavy. Nothing much except a half-broken bed, chairs, and a table. The table was littered with food, drinks, and other commodities. Evidently, Malarame brought these things in from outside. I looked at the water bottle and swallowed reflexively. <laughs> but the walls of my esophagus stuck together, making me cough. I was now dangerously thirsty. Nevertheless, I refused to drink the water. I reached up to rub my neck and my fingers touched the collar. This was the one thing truly keeping me prisoner. And yet, I lost the will to remove it. A scab had formed over the cut I'd given myself and I was sawing the collar with a glass shard. <laughs> It felt like something was stuck in my throat. My body craved water. Apparently water was more vital than food. It, yes, it, it is. <laughs> so it was just like, just let me perish, bro. <laughs> but I didn't want to drink Madarame's water. <laughs> I didn't want him to see that I had accepted something from him. Maybe I could drink the plumbing water. Maybe then he wouldn't be able to tell. With one hand against the wall, I rose to my feet and heaved my le leaden legs into the bathroom. I twisted the knob and after a pause, water, trick water trickled out! <laughs> I kept it in both hands, brought it to my mouth and drank. It tasted so good, it felt like it single-handedly breathed life back into every cell in my body. Spurred on by my biological needs, I pressed my lips to the faucet and drank. <laughs> 
before had I enjoyed water this much. I drank until I was sa satiated, then turned the knob to stop the stream. And I sat right there and stared at the floor. The water must have helped me recover because after a while, intense, intense rage welled in my gut. Yeah, I must be feeling well because I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Gritting my teeth, I grabbed my collar with both hands and tugged hard. I knew it wouldn't come off, but I couldn't fight the impulse. After I dug my nails into the leather over and over, I grabbed the chain and pulled as hard as I could. <laughs> Compulsively, like an injured animal, I fought like my life depended on it. In the end, by the time I finally wore myself out, my finger fingernails had torn. Ow. Ugh. His hands look super pretty. <laughs> like in this, he looks super pretty in this. Breathing heavily, I looked idly at my bloody fingers like they were someone else's. Strangely enough, I couldn't feel the pain. Maybe my senses had gone numb. Once I caught my breath, the silence came rushing back. Here in the empty room, the void of sound engulfed me. As my fears swelled, I couldn't bear to stay quiet. A choking sound escaped from the back of my throat. And I grabbed my completely f I didn't even care if Madarame walked in on me. I had nothing to hide at this point. If anything, I was more afraid of the silence crushing me. Fortunately, sleep would grant me a reprieve from all that. Assuming I could, of course. Embracing the lethargy that settled over me, I waited for the Sandman to visit. No Sandman, huh? Unfortunately, he didn't show up. Yep, yeah, he'd be like that sometimes. Instead, I rose to my feet and walked to the window. Freed from lust, my body felt a bit lighter. I gazed out at the cloudy city through the empty window frame. What part of District A was I in? I couldn't hear any pedestrians or traffic. Apparently we were in a really dilapidated section, far from where the deathmatch fighters milled around. Takasato Gumi had erected a banner around it so no one would mistakenly wander in. In these parts, large cracks split the streets and buildings, some of which were on the verge of collapse. But the deathmatch death fighters had no interest in exploring. Listening to the whistle of the wind and the miscellaneous creaking sounds, I stared blankly into the distance. Just then, I heard footsteps approaching. <laughs> Reflexively, I concealed myself and peered out again. Carefree voices echoed off the buildings. Maybe they were deathmatch fighters, or maybe they were Takasato goons. And the men's voices faded into the distance until I could no longer hear them. I pressed my back against the wall and exhaled slowly as I slid down into a sitting position. Slow damage. Dang, this run is rough. <laughs> this is rough out here. <laughs> oh, mercy. Okay. Oh boy, day four. Okay, most likely day four, he says. Today was day four, most likely. By this point, it was all starting to blur together. I still hadn't eaten anything, so my body remained deeply fatigued. Times like these, I was surprised to discover I was actually capable of feeling hungry. My appetite was usually so slight, I scarcely ever noticed it. Ironic that Pararame, of all people, had me discover the true value of life. I wanted to laugh, but the most I managed was a faint half smirk. With no strength to move, I lay there on the dusty floor. The icy concrete penetrated down to my bones, making my extremities go numb. I still hadn't touched the food or water Madarami got for me. He walked over to me and used his foot to prod my shoulder. I let him roll me onto my back. I mean, 
I was too tired to even part my chapped lips. <sighs> he let out a frustrated sigh, then crouched down. What do you mean what I want? I don't want to be here! <laughs> what? <laughs> what do I want? My dull, fuzzy brain was unable to process this. I stared back at him vacantly. Felt like I was in a muddy stupor. <laughs> Alcohol and cigarettes, yeah. <laughs> my voice was so hoarse I slurred my words, but apparently he could still parse it. He strained up, walked back, walked to the table, grabbed something, and walked back. He was holding a pack of cigarettes, a lighter, and a bottle of booze. Crouched down, put a cigarette between his lips, lit it, and took a quick drag. And as a tiny thread of smoke rose from the tip, he pinched it between his fingers and held it out from oh, held it out to my mouth. Deep down, I craved nicotine so bad it hurt. But I refused to accept his charity, so I turned my head away. <laughs> he grabbed me by the jaw and stuffed the cigarette between my lips. <coughs> Ow. Startled, I breathed in deeply and choked. After going without for so long, the nicotine was intense, and it felt like my throat was going numb. But once I had a taste, I couldn't stop. I caught, oh, after I caught my breath, I took a good, long drag. It was still too intense, and I grimaced, but I could feel the smoke filling every inch of my body. <sighs> to me, this was more satisfying than any food or drink. Next, Madarami set a bottle of booze down. No, that was when my stubbornness kicked in again. With the cigarette between my lips, I pointedly averted my gaze, even though I wanted to chug the whole thing. Sure, oh, he's gonna like make you <laughs> drink it! <laughs> Clucking his tongue, he grabbed the bottle and took a swig, holding the fluid in- oh, okay, he's doing that thing. Okay, he grabbed me by the jaw and pulled me close. Ah, uh, of course. <laughs> Not quite what I imagined this scene being, but okay. The cigarette fell from my lips as he forced his, uh, forced his onto them. Lukewarm alcohol flowed in through the gap in my teeth, burning my throat. After he confirmed that I swallowed it all, he took another swig. And he kissed me again. <laughs> again and again, he filled my mouth with booze and I drank it down. He is humongous. All of his, they, do you see this shoulder? He is like big. No wonder everyone's afraid of him. Because <laughs> he, he probably can crush like people's necks. He can probably crush Toa's, but you know, let's hope he does it. With every swallow, fluid trickled from the corners of my mouth. Like a cigarette, this was my first taste of alcohol in days. First, it felt like it was searing my organs, but. Gradually, it started to feel good. After my umpteenth swallow, Madarame finally pulled away. Yes! <laughs> Homie, like, you think he's doing this for kicks? Like, <laughs> oh, mercy. Okay, let's continue. Okay, come on. I mean, this is the first time he's kind of like talk, like, you know, not at me. Actually talking. You know. He asked me in a low voice as he gazed into my eye. Ooh. He denied me flatly. Uh, of course. <laughs> There's one thing very consistent about Toa, and it's his attitude. You know, like, um, um, I, gosh, how about, I had my words I was gonna say and they, they left me, they lost, they lost in the club. Um, but Toa, like, Toa's like for real, like he's not, um, he's not kidding. Like he would rather perish than continue this, and he's like, "Oh, I'm I'm 100% for real." But he can barely talk, so it's kind of funny that he's just like, "I'd rather perish," and he's just like, "No," and he's like, "I hate you." 
<laughs> like he has no strength in him and he's just like, let me perish. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> and Madarami, Madarami, I don't, like, the thing is Madarami's like, you're not allowed to die. And I'm just like, but what does Madarami want? Like, what is, I don't know, like, Toa doesn't know, I don't know, I don't know what, what he wants from Toa right now. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's, you know, how is Toa gonna like, what, what is Toa like, sitting here for? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's get it. <laughs> I got too many questions this, this route, okay? Um, but this route does seem very, very severe, so it's like, I guess the, the theme of this route is like, just utter hopelessness. Um, being deprived of like, everything, so, um, I, that seems to be the vibe, so. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. I tried to sneer, but my lips barely twitched. He regarded me silently for a moment, then picked up the pastry still lying unwrapped nearby. He tore it open, took a bite, then grabbed my jaw all over again. Obviously, I wasn't expecting this, so my reaction was delayed. Oh gosh. In a blink, he pressed his lips to my- Oh, there was no alcohol at the time. <laughs> what, is, what is happening here? He used his tongue to wedge the bite of food into my mouth. Oh, okay. Well, that would work. Okay. He's always trying to feed Toa. I tried to spit it out, but he held his head- uh, He held my head in place, and yeah, Madarami looks- particularly strong so <laughs> the moment the flavor hit my tongue i became intensely hungry my jaw started chewing and i swallowed in spite of myself <coughs> as soon as he pulled his lips away i turned my head and started coughing hard i wanted to spit the food out but it was too late on the contrary my body was now screaming at me for more nutrients madarami took another bite and kissed me again Unable to fight my body's intense desire to survive, I could only let it happen. <clears throat> he was still holding my jaw, but I chewed and swaddle, swallowed obediently. First of all, I could feel my body retort. He held my face and handed me the rest of the pastry. Trail. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> With that, he straightened up and walked into the bedroom. I watched him go, then laid myself down on the floor. My eyes shifted from the bottle of booze to the still burning cigarette to the half eaten pastry in my hand. What are these passion ci oh, passion cigarettes? Oh, passion cigarettes. I feel like I've seen those before. Or at least something that looks like them. You know, Jack Whiskey. <laughs> Frankly, I wanted all of it. I wanted to eat and drink and smoke to my heart's content. Never before had I desired something as strongly as I did now. Clearly, my body was in survival mode, desperate to avoid starvation. But even then, I still do want to accept Madarami into my life. Ooh. I closed my eye and shut him out. Slow damage. But the slow damage is coming up like way faster. Is this like a. <laughs> it, I know it's a passing of time. That's, that's what it is. But it's like, I can tell that the passage of time is very short because um, Toa is, is stuck here in this room, so he's not doing anything really. Um, as compared to like, Day and Taku's route where he's like, he's always wandering. Um, like he can do free exploration. And so that's probably why the slow damage doesn't show up as much as, um, as it has in this past like, couple of playthroughs. <laughs> So, I woke to the feeling of being shaken. Oi. That was just like, who else is it gonna be besides Madarami? <laughs> Once Madarami confirmed that I was conscious, he grabbed me by the arm and hauled me up. Stumbling sleepily, I followed after him as he walked across the room. Oh, oh. we arrived at the bathroom. And he shoved me into the shower stall. I'm surprised these things still work. I can't lie. I'm surprised the water still works. But at the same time, not unsurprised. Because if these are just abandoned, like, dilapidated places, the water probably still, like, is okay. Um, but also, it looks gross. So <laughs> I nearly fell onto my butt, but caught myself against the wall in the nick of time. Meanwhile, 
He ripped my clothes off as a cascade of cold water remain oh rained down from the shower head affixed to the water. That's some clean water for a place that hasn't been busted. Oh. <gasps> I was already freezing cold, so I flinched. As the water gradually warmed up, my numbed extremities began to tingle. With a stream of water at my back, I looked around. Arami was standing outside the shower stall with his arms folded. You're weirding me out. I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what is happening? Oh. Okay. Is this? Apparently, you wanted to give me a bath, as if I was really his pet dog or something. What a joke. Just press the laugh. It was just so absurd for both of us. The nigger rose up with the laughter, and I glared at him beneath my sopping wet bangs. Did not feel like playing his little game. I balled my hand to a fist and lunged at him, but my swing was too weak to connect, and Madarame dodged easily before swiftly countering. His fist shot like a bullet into my face, and I hit the wall behind me. Ow. A reflex. <laughs> oh my god. His tone was casual, and I could tell he wasn't sorry at all. Yeah. 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 He's not eating, homie. Like, what? <laughs> you had to make him eat the bread by shoving it into his mouth with your mouth. But you think? You think he's joking? He just said he wants the pep. Anyway, sorry. No, just <laughs> he's just like, you're not messing. You're not messing around. No. <laughs> As he spoke, he reached out and grabbed me by the neck. Oh, here we go. Ah, oh, why are you opening his eye socket? This is very, I don't think you guys can, I probably have to censor this, but um, <laughs> sorry, I was, I'm just, <laughs> this is a very pretty CG, actually. I can't, I can't lie to you, but. What a mess. As I sat slumped against the wall with my knees bent, he tilted my head upwards, then he removed my eye patch. There was a dark red stain on the underside. He must have started bleeding when he punched me. <sighs> Why does he keep punching him in the eye? Like the... Like the eye that doesn't have an eye anymore. Like... You know what I'm saying? Anyway, sorry, sorry, I'm just like, the eye socket has been bleeding like so much and like, oh gosh. Oh boy. No, I did it for kicks. Look, sorry. <laughs> Listen. Madarame is like not like... You know, I was like, okay, finally, we're here with Madarami. He's finally gonna, like, tell me stuff. He's not telling me nothing! <laughs> I'm just sitting here with Toa, and Toa's just like, let me perish. Like, nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, yeah, let me perish too, bro. Like, I, mean, <laughs> I was just like, weird. You know, literally, like Toa said, he's just, like, being tortured. Like, 1,000%, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's just, there's nothing... Uh, yeah, uh, anyway. <sighs> anyway, let's continue. <laughs> this whole thing is probably cut off, it doesn't matter. He reached out and pried my empty eyelid open without hesitation. <laughs> the water is up. Can't with this dude. Gunkyu Nainoka. He examined the socket thoroughly, then let go. Why do you think... The answers you are asking are very simple. Like, very easy. Like... <laughs> I 
poor, my poor peep, you have to deal with this. My poor little peep plushie that's my emotional support slash cushion. Like, my, my uh, peep plushie is probably just like, I have, I don't know. <laughs> the peep plushie is like, I don't know, man. I, we should just, <laughs> the peep plushie wants Fujieta to show up. Like, you know, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you are wearing me out. <laughs> like you are tired. You... <sighs> what are you doing? <laughs> Get me out. <laughs> I feel like this is worse than Tono. No, it's not worse than Tono. I'm just. Just. Ah, you know what I do? I feel like. Like, this is a lesser form of male Alice from Taisho Alice. <laughs> okay, now, now Madarame is not that bad. I'm just. I just want to fight Madarame, but Toa can't because Toa's been starving himself for like four days and so Toa doesn't have any strength. <laughs> so it gets her. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry to compare you to, to Alice of Taisho Alice. Um, you know, I fought real hard with that guy for like two hours. I'm just being dramatic with Madarame here because both Toa and I are are tired, and Madarame is just like, you don't have to hide your eye, your your missing eye, you know. And I'm like, what if I want, like, what if I want to, you know? That's not your business, Madarame. Like, what if I feel like it? If I feel like it, I'm allowed to hide it. You know, I feel like it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Let's continue. <laughs> <sighs> when I didn't answer, he chuckled. My, <laughs> Oh gosh. <laughs> the next thing I knew, he was holding a bar of soap. He rubbed it directly against my head to create a lather. Yeah, <laughs> man. Like... Oh, I struggled to escape, but he grabbed my head with both hands and started washing my hair. As the drone of the water and lathering sounds echoed in the stall, I determined that my resistance was futile and fell still. Manorami lathered my hair until he was satisfied and moved my head under the stream of water. <laughs> the sudsy water streamed into my face. I squeezed my eyes shut. After he rinsed my hair, he moved me out of the water stream. He pressed the bar of soap against my bare chest. I squirmed as it brushed my scars. But evidently, he wasn't doing this to titillate me. Well, showering you, so. <laughs> he moved from my chest to my stomach, then down to my groin. After he washed my legs, he grabbed my shoulder and turned me around, and started on my back. <sighs> It felt so deeply bizarre to have Mararame wash my body. I couldn't decipher what he was thinking, and his behavior made no sense. Yeah, that, that's the main thing. I'm like, I don't know what the T is here. Like, I'm, I'm just frustrated, <laughs> so... I knew this was just who he was, but it still left me flummoxed. Yes. He moved me under the water to rinse me off, then stopped the stream. Next, he grabbed the towel sitting folded on the counter and handed it to me. Oh, he gets clothes now? <laughs> he jerked his chin to indicate the white shirt that was beneath the towel and left the bathroom. Holding the towel, I stood blankly in the shower. Oh, in the shower stall for a few moments. He still couldn't quite process it. Madrami was a man who played by his own rules. And in the time since I'd last seen him, he sincerely hadn't changed a bit. While I roughly dried myself off, Madarami hit it out somewhere. And a few hours later... As the sky beyond the window began to turn dark, I sat against the wall, drifting in and out of consciousness. I hadn't touched Mad Madarami's offerings, and I was unusually sleepy, possibly my body trying to conserve its energy. Mood. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so he's just wearing the same clothes. Okay, good good to know. <laughs> there was a loud noise. 
I opened my eye. The door opened and footsteps approached. I caught a whiff of blood. Okay, here we go. And Arabi walked up to me, grabbed my arm, and hauled me up. Oh gosh, here we go again. Oh boy. <sighs> Have mercy on me. <laughs> Preparing myself. Mentally. As I rose to my feet, I glared at him. Then I sensed something alarming in his demeanor and frowned slightly. His usual, his usual self-assured attitude was nowhere to be seen. And why did he smell like blood? Well, he's bloody. So, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm just like, I mean, you know, there's a giant blood stain on his chest. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Upon closer inspection, I could see red stains splattered on his shirt. That's a good question, actually. Is he? Does Madarama get hurt? Without answering, he reached straight for my collar. Then I heard a click, and the perpetual chokehold finally vanished. <gasps> he had removed my collar. I considered making a run for it, but his tight grip on my arm suggested it wouldn't go well. Even in the darkness, I could see a feral glint in his eyes. Oh, what's happening here? Oh, he tossed the collar to the ground, then started dragging me in the direction of the bedroom. I see where this is going. When we got there, he threw me down face first onto the bed. Okay. I'll see y'all in a bit, probably. <laughs> Have mercy. <laughs> Thin mattress let out a small creak. There was a click, and a dim orange light illuminated the room. Arami pulled his coat off and wordlessly crawled on top of me. Here we go. I looked over my shoulder and caught a sight of, scarlet, of a scarlet stain stretching from his sleeve to his chest. There were other red smears here and there, but those were probably from someone else's blood. The big stain, however, was bright and pungent. Oh, before I could finish my question, he pushed my face down into the pillow. <sighs> you know, I'm just... Trying out here, man. He commanded me robotically with no trace of emotion. <laughs> Wordlessly, Matarame rose from the bed. It sends him looking down at me. Then his footsteps headed into the distance, and I heard the chair creak in the other room. I opened my eye a crack and gazed around. Beyond the, beyond the glassless windows, I could see a crescent moon in the night sky. And that was the last thing I saw before I passed up. Mercy. <laughs> Wait, flashback dreams? Okay. I've been waiting for this, I've been waiting for this. Okay, okay. The moon was huge that night. There were no clouds. It was a tranquil yellow moon shining quietly. Oh. Hi. <laughs> and what lay beneath that tranquility was pure carnage. As if disconnected from the sky altogether, the ground below was dusty, hazy, filled with shouts and gunshots. People were running around, fighting, punching. Meanwhile, I stood there, staring blankly. Why was I here? This was the past. The nightmare I didn't want to remember. Nightmare. Dream. And I realized I was dreaming. Now that I thought about it, none of these people seemed to notice me standing, the, uh, standing here. <laughs> This was a memory from when the Takasato Gumi turned on each other. Oh yeah, that's a that's a good one. Just then a piercing hot impact struck my right eye. My vision went white, and the next thing I knew, I was lying on the ground. My whole head throbbed hard, and the right half of my vision was muddy and crimson. It smells something burning. Then the sounds of the scuffle came back into focus. 
engulfing me in an instant. The whole time I just lay there. Just then, my eye flew open. Apparently I'd fallen asleep. A small, crappy floor lamp was still on, glowing dimly orange. I felt like I dream about- uh, I felt like I dreamed about something. Something I didn't want to remember about my past. A stab of pain shot through my right eye, and I inhaled sharply. Lightly rubbing my empty eyelid with one hand, I slowly exhaled one more. Oh, once more. The pain wasn't real. It was just residual phantom pain from the nightmare. Digging my nails into my eyelid, I slowly pushed myself up into a sitting position. Oh, on the edge of the bed, sorry. On the edge of the bed. <laughs> then I looked for Madarame and found him sitting in the chair in the other room. His head was tilted downwards, his posture relaxed. Is he asleep? The light from the floor lamp didn't reach him, so I couldn't tell. But I could see his coat drape lazily over the table. It was the first time I'd ever seen him sleep since I got here. And if he was sleeping, was he getting sloppy now that a few days had passed? Suddenly I was very awake, like someone had dumped a bucket of cold water over my head. I observed him carefully, then rose to my feet. I wasn't wearing the collar, so I was free to walk around as I pleased. Slowly pressing my bare feet to the cold floor, I quietly crept forward. As I approached the table near Madarame, I paused to gaze his gauge his reaction. Still no sign of him stirring, so I continued to the table. I was hoping I'd find something useful in his coat pockets, like a weapon or something. Funny how quickly I changed my tune about escaping as soon as the opportunity presented itself. Nevertheless, I reached out to the coat. Careful not to make a sound, I slipped my fingers into each pocket. I focused my attention on my fingertips, trying to gauge what was in there. I kept glancing at Madarame out of the corner of my eye. I was so nervous my palms started to sweat. Then right as I was about to give up, my fingers brushed something hard and cold. I grabbed and pulled it out. A switchblade. I didn't even have time to feel relieved. Eager to escape, I glanced over at Madarame. Instantly, I froze. His emotionless eyes were staring back at me. Wasn't he fast asleep just seconds ago? His eyes glinted coldly in the darkness. Then his smoke twitched. Reflexively, I turned to bolt. But he was faster and he grabbed my arm. <laughs> My body staggered backwards, and I hit the ground flat on my back, knocking the wind out of me. He just- This was like a bad idea because he doesn't have strength, so if Madarame caught him anyway, it's like- Game. Anyway, sorry, sorry, I'm just like- Ah. <sighs> As I grimaced and coughed, a shadow fell over me even darker than the rest of the room. Simultaneously, a gust of wind brushed past my ear. He fell onto me, stabbing the knife into the floor. His expression and tone were both perfectly rational, which made him all the more creepy. He pulled the knife out of the floor and pressed it against my cheek. The icy blade sent goosebumps prickling up my arms. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> I have fear. You know what's funny? Um Madarami doesn't look it. But essentially what I'm getting is that Madarame is like a borderline Yandere. It's just that he doesn't look crazy. He's just very calm. But his behavior is that of a yandere, because he just literally said he's like I could, I could like sever your tendons, but that complicates things for me, right? I'm like dang, ma. 
I don't know why that ironically kind of makes me warm up to him because like I love young Perez, but at the same time I'm like dang like can you not <laughs> at the same time I'm just like please not tell her okay he's already he's already missing an eye <laughs> like please he's he's also like super emaciated like you know he already doesn't like to eat you know please he's already suffering like you know anyway <sighs> he pressed his lips to my ear and spoke in a breathy whisper. <laughs> Every time he breathed into my eardrum, it sent a shudder down my spine. I turned my face away. He lifted his head, then he grabbed my shirt with both hands and forcefully ripped it open. The moonlight streamed in through the windows, illuminating my sticky pale chest and innumerable scars. He examined my body silently, then narrowed his eyes. Even when I saw it, I was more and more tired. I don't know if I was going to change it. I don't know. You know, every time I'm just like, okay, maybe I'm warming up to you a little bit. He opens his mouth. And I get upset. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Why? You're the one who took... Toa. Like, Toa just wants to, like, not be here. Like, what? What? Why are we here? Why are we here, Madarame? Just hearing you insult Toa and then, like, act like you like him and then insult him again. And I'm just like, I'm confused. A true Yandere. <laughs> you know, you'd think this would make him a Tsundere, but, like, he's not denying anything, so that's why he he's not a Tsundere. He's probably a little more Yandere than he is Sundere because Sundere just don't admit anything. So <laughs> Fair. Fair. I glared back at him, refusing to be intimidated. Then a prick of pain shot through the left side of my chest. Yeah, okay, yeah, here we go. I looked down to see the tip of the knife pressing against it. Matarame smiled and slid the knife toward, but okay, here we go. <laughs> oh no. The very tip of the blade nicked the skin, and a tiny bead of blood formed. Okay. <sighs> is this where we are? Is this, is this what's happening here? <laughs> I don't know how there's any good ending here. I'm gonna be real about this. I, I, if there is a good ending, I don't know how we're gonna get it. Be, you know? from this house anyway <laughs> with his eyes locked on mine Manarame lowered his head and ran his tongue to my bleeding nip <gasps> oh boy tingling pain and wet warmth made me exhale he looked up at me and licked his lips sensually Let's just keep going. I'm just gonna keep my thoughts to myself until this is until we're a little farther along. <laughs> For some reason, I hated the fact that he was the one commenting on it, and I hated myself for letting it turn me on. Oh boy! He pointed the tip of the knife at the scar that bisected my chest. That was all it took to make me shiver in anticipation. I wanted him to stab the knife into me and rip me open. I nearly lost myself in fantasy, picturing blood pouring from the raised flesh. Madarami must have sensed this because he pressed the knife hard ag Ow! Hard against the scar! Reflexively, I let out a little breath. But then he pulled the knife away and got off me. Oh boy. I looked up at him as he complained, and I realized he had changed his shirt. There's no scarlet stain on this one. Instead, I could see a bandage peeking out from his lazily rolled up sleeve. Sure enough, he was injured. This wasn't common for Madarame. Like when we were in the Takasato Gumi, I hardly ever saw him get hurt. Did he go head to head against a skilled fighter, or did he get sloppy? Madarame rose to his feet and grabbed the collar off the floor. The chain rattled as he walked back over. Ultimately, I ended up wave, uh, wearing the collar again. <sighs> you can't blame a homie for trying, okay? 
But I will admit, yeah, like I said, it, it was kind of a bad idea because Toa doesn't really have strength in him, so it's like even if he ran, like, you know, he could just get caught and all, all, all that stuff. He scoffed at me. Then he grabbed the coat off the table and pulled, pulled, it, pulled it on. He dropped the switchblade back into his pocket, headed for the door, and walked out into the dark night. <sighs> oh, boy. I lay there in the darkness until silence fell. At which point, I slowly pushed myself up. I knew full well, full well this would happen. I was stupid to try to fight him. But I was baited into it by the sight of him sleeping. I was the one who got sloppy. I no longer had the energy to curse my idiocy, however. My cold, numb fingers brushed against my collar. I insta oh, instantly my fatigue and lethargy overwhelmed me all at once. I slumped against the floor. Slow damage. How many days we've been here? <laughs> I feel like we've been here for like a year. <laughs> what time was it? How many days had passed since I first got here? I love how like every time I'm just like, I got a question and then Toa's just like ask the question. I'm like, oh. I like that we're on the same wavelength, me and Toa. <laughs> I was now in a severely debilitated state. I lay on the floor in a perpetual daze, like I was always on the cusp of falling asleep. My limbs were too weak to move, but I wasn't trying to go anywhere, so I didn't mind. This was the natural income, oh, outcome of refusing food and drink. By this point, I didn't even feel the hunger. My vision was hazy, and it was hard to tell whether I was awake or dreaming. I lay there, zoning out, hallucinating. I would always lay around during those days, too. Not on the cold concrete, but on a bed. During those days, I was part of the Takasato Gumi. I was always with Madarami. We would sit on the sofa and read books, or watch TV while I laid on the bed nearby. We never did much except stare up at the ceiling and idle the time away. Even if we didn't talk, there was always some kind of background noise to keep me occupied, like the drone of the TV or Madarami's slightest movements. More than anything, I was at peace. I didn't particularly wish I could go back to those times, but I could picture it, picture it vividly. Few words could aptly describe my life with Madarame. How did Madarame feel about it looking back? Do you think of it the same way I did? Madarame. Just then, I heard a commotion from outside, oh, from outside the window. <sighs> I raised my head and looked outside. My body felt like lead, so I couldn't move swiftly. Supported by the wall, I used both hands to rise to my feet. After that, I needed a minute to recover my energy. Once I caught my breath, I staggered to the window. I could see a few people standing outside the building. At first, I thought they were deathmatch fighters, but I could see something glinting in their hands. Guns, maybe. I crouched down beneath the window. These guys couldn't be deathmatch fighters since firearms were tacitly prohibited. So who were they? Kono's goons? Maybe they finally tracked down Madarami's hideout. My first instinct was to get out of here before they found me, then I scoffed at myself. Why did I need to run? What did I care if they killed me? Not like my body was willing to cooperate anyway. But right before I gave into despair, something flashed through my mind. Eyes. Madarami's eyes. Staring at me in cold contempt. <laughs> Instantly, long forgotten rage welled up in my chest and I gritted my teeth. Impulsively, I reached for my collar. The thick leather held fast and my fingers easily slipped from its surface. The more I struggled, the louder the chain rattled. However, I must have tugged it in, in the right spot because it popped off with a click. <sighs> what the? Was it locked? Did Madarami have forgotten to lock it? No way. Oh, did he? It could only mean one thing. I tossed the collar to the floor, provoking a metal, uh, metallic clatter from the chain. And I staggered away from the window to the door. Out in the hallway, I could hear footsteps and sense people approaching. They were already in the building. At this, I clucked my tongue in frustration. 
He must have heard me struggling with the collar. I pressed a hand to the wall, held my breath, and crept down the hall on my bare feet. As I moved, I dodged around the debris and destroyed the walls. Ah! My body was sluggish and I accidentally tripped over a brick. In my hurry to regain my balance, I accidentally kicked it and set it clattering across Oi. the floor. Oi. I could hear voices coming down the hall, so I changed directions and went up the stairs instead. With my hand on the wall, I slowly heaved my feet up step by step. The slightest motion was enough to sap my energy. I was so weak I was already grasping, or gasping for breath. Meanwhile, a, cr a crowd of footsteps raced up the stairs oh after me. I fell still. Then one of them grabbed me by the hair. I don't know! At this, they yanked me backwards. He is literally, like, naked. Like, I don't know what- I fell slamming my back against the stairs. <gasps> Reflexively, I squeezed my eyes shut. When I opened it again, someone wearing a ski mask was staring back at me. Yeah. <coughs> Ow. When I didn't comply, the man struck the butt of his gun against my face. Can y'all stop hitting to- Like, he's- He's missing an eye, he's half naked, like- why y'all like quit? He obviously is like jacked up. Like what? I'm tired. <laughs> I know Toa is okay with it. But like y'all, like please. Show the homie some mercy. Like he's had it rough, okay? He's only had like a pan bread that was force fed to him. Okay? Be like Bicho. <laughs> Stars flew behind my eyelids as the impact rattled my skull. <gasps> Suddenly, the man disappeared from view. <laughs> ah yes, here we are. <laughs> when I looked up, Madarame was standing there. Meanwhile, the other man was curled into a ball on the floor, groaning. At all at once, the rest of them pointed their guns at Madarame. <laughs> Somehow, I found the energy to push myself up and shove Madarame out of the way. Oh, that can't be good. Suddenly, everything started to happen in slow motion. While a different memory was playing in sync. This wasn't the first time I had tried to take a bullet from Madarame. <gasps> he did not try and take a bullet from Madarame, and that's why he's missing an eye. I will weep. <laughs> I will weep. But honestly, I should have seen that coming. That's... The foreshadowing was pretty hard, like, you know, it was pretty, like, you know, flashing neon lights, you know. But anyway, sorry, let's, the climax is here. <laughs> I think, maybe it's not. The last time it happened, the person who pulled the trigger was the... Of, of course it was Tono. <laughs> it was Tono. At last, I finally remembered. Ah! Ah! When I returned to reality, I realized Madarami and I had fallen onto the narrow staircase. <laughs> he hasn't! I almost threw my peep on the floor. It's not your fault. It's not your fault, peep. It's just... <sighs> okay. Okay, we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. It's okay. It's okay, peepee. Don't worry. Don't worry. You guys can't see the, my, my stuffed peep. My poor stuffed peep. Probably very upset with me. <laughs> okay. It's not you. It's not you. I'm just, I'm just emotional. <laughs> Madrame muttered quietly, then got up and headed over to the men who fired. I lay on my stomach on the stairs and watched it unfold from the corner of my eye. The way he took down opponent after opponent, I'm sure he- I'm sh ah, he sure didn't look injured. There we go. <laughs> the bullet must have missed. Or it hit him and it didn't matter. I <laughs> Madarame seems crazy. I exhaled and closed my eye. I'd used up the last drugs of my energy and now I was drowsy to the point of nausea. The gunshots and shouting faded and silence fell. And I felt someone pick me up. As I faded in and out of consciousness, I thought over the flashback I just had. Was Tono? Oh yeah, he gave. Yeah. 
遠野の差し金だろう。No, no, 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 no. 違う。かがと、あんたを撃ったのは、そうなだ。I thought I heard Madarami swallow ever so slightly. But that was the moment sleep possessed me at last. Come on, baby, give me some, give me some tea. I could remember it all. The memories flowed like a twisting kaleidoscope. Tono shot Kaga. Then Tono faced off against Madarami. I was with him at the start, but at one point, Madarami told me to hide behind a building and watch from a distance. What? Oh, no, 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 no way, no, no, no. Oh, but I don't like what this is implying. I don't, I hate it. <laughs> not this chain, not this, not the chain, sorry. <laughs> not this outfit, sorry. Kumi no shora, you miss it in the hand and the. Jurai no Furuksa Yarikataja, Kumiba Uchibureri Poda Darekanga Tarashi Hokoe Kajio Kiranakan Naranai Oyajimo Sakaki or Shijisir Koto Kimeta. But then what? Okay, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue. I'm just like, I thought. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my, what Baka I or I eat their cotton no imia, walk at their house. Jibun need to the Naniga to Kukao Kanga at the middle. Oh boy. Koto or Honkiko? Not how much I hate Tono. Ah, you are. Yeah, the Karada. I respect that, I respect that. So good. Oh no, here we go. <gasps> Tono drew a gun from his breast pocket. Then he pointed it at Badarami and pulled the trigger. <laughs> Toa had blonde hair back then? Oh my gosh. At the time I ran out on impulse. And right as I shoved him, I felt something hot pierce my eye, my right eye. The right half of my vision was pure red, so I looked at him with the half, with the left half. His jacket was wet with blood. Have he, had he been hit? Tono looked at me coldly, then turned the gun on me. <coughs> Instantly, Madarami shot up and lunged, to uh, lunged at Tono's ha gun hand. Tono? The two of them fumbled for the gun. <coughs> then the gun went off and Madarame froze. During the struggle, the two of them had stumbled to the edge of the pier. Madarame grimaced slightly, clutching his gut. His shirt was stained scarlet. <gasps> <gasps> then he fell backwards into the ocean. There was a loud splash. Breathing heavily, Tono turned the smoking gun on me as I lay on the ground. I was frozen to the spot. My right eye felt like it was on fire. My whole body was throbbing. A moment later, I realized the weird, feral breathing sounds were my own. Meanwhile, my one working eye was going hazy. Oh? Tono looked at me for a long moment, then lowered the gun. Apparently, he wasn't going to kill me. The next instant, I was overcome with intense drowsiness. Didn't want to sleep, but my consciousness was already fading. What? That was the last thing I heard before everything went dark. What? <laughs> no, I'm 
triple angry. Now I'm triple upset. I hate it here. <laughs> and the next time I awoke, my memories were a blur. According to Taku, who performed the eye surgery, I slept for five days straight. Taku asked me about what happened, but all I remembered was that Kaga, Madarami, and I all got shot. Oh man. Oh, we're back. We're back. Okay. When I awoke, I lifted my heavy eyelid. Where are we now? Are we in a different place? <laughs> okay. My vision came into focus and I found Madarame right next to me. Boy. Normally his face only had two modes, stoic or smug grin. But for once, I could see a hard look in his eyes. But I didn't have the energy to keep looking at him, so I closed my eye again. And I drifted back into the haze of sleep. <laughs> My eye flew open at, a sun at the sudden hard impact. Madarami's face was now inches from mine. He grabbed my jaw and kissed me. Oh, here we go. <laughs> something entered my mouth, something that tasted like flour, some kind of pastry. I tried to fight it, but with my body out of commission, that wasn't help oh, happening. I couldn't even push him away. I could only claw weakly at his arm. <laughs> he kissed me until he confirmed that I had swallowed the food, then pulled away. <laughs> As I gasped for breath, he kissed me again. It was repeated a few more times, and he started kissing water into my mouth. <laughs> Partway through, I gave up and let him do it. <laughs> Freed from the baby bird roleplay, I coughed. Next to him, I could see an empty pastry wrapper. Yes. Yes, because the other two have tried very hard. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> he straightened up and pulled his chair over and sat down. Oh, sat down on it. Then I realized we were not in the same place we were before. Madarami must have moved us after Tono caught wind of the last one. I reached up to my neck and felt cold leather. I was wearing the collar again. This time, the chain was attached to a thick pipe near the wall. Like last time, I was surrounded by pastries and bottles of water. You know, he could just get, like, not pastries, you know? <laughs> Effectively, nothing had changed about my circumstances save for the location. The attack had done nothing to change Madarame's mind. While this didn't surprise me, at the same time, I felt like this hell was unending. Would, <laughs> would I remain his pet until my last breath? I didn't even have the energy to- <laughs> Oh, Toa. <laughs> Please. Toa, I'm gonna get you out of here. I hope. I hope that's where this is going. <laughs> I'm gonna try my best, buddy. If only I could wi- If only I could will my heart to stop beating. In my mind, I had no desire to eat, but my body had other plans. I could feel it stirring in response to the food. Is there any point in prolonging my life like this? They have no other choice. <laughs> Bitterly, I swallowed my despair. That night, I lay curled up against the wall, nodding off when I heard what sounded like gravel crunching. I opened my eye and looked over. Madarami had risen from his chair and was now standing at the window. Outside, a half moon hung in the inky sky. Sleepily, he stared vacantly at his face in profile. He must have sensed my gaze because he looked over his shoulder at me and walked over. <laughs> His cold eyes stared down at me as I huddled against the wall. I swallowed dryly. In this state, I didn't have much energy to talk. 
As I spoke hoarsely, I touched my right socket. Madarami had yet to return my eye patch. He narrowed his eyes slightly, and instead of responding, he turned and walked back to the window. I watched him go. Meanwhile, one particular question continued to swirl in my mind. Uh, yeah, that's my question. That's my question. I never meant to say it, but the words left my lips of their own accord. This condition, I had lost my usual self-control. He shot me a glance. Good work. Give him the business. <laughs> the words wouldn't stop coming. At the same time, I felt oddly furious at my own long dead heart. I glared at him, but he didn't say a word. Instead, he walked away from the window to the corner of the room. As I lay there enduring my pent-up anger, something fell on me. It was a set of new clothes, plus my old coat. Kigaro. Meanwhile, Madarame shrugged into his own coat. Dekakeruzo. What? Exploration? <laughs> at this, I frowned up at him. What? 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 He narrowed his eyes in annoyance. That's funny. Hold on, he mentioned it. Yeah, otherwise, you go on free, buddy. I held up the chain attached to my collar. It's, it's true. Even, even if he takes out the collar, like, Toa couldn't even get up from the floor. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was right. My energy was at an all-time low. Even if I tried to run at full speed, I'd never outrun him. It wasn't an option. I waited for him to remove my collar, then put on my new clothes, and looked at myself in the bathroom mirror. It looked like a gaunt, ashen corpse. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. I was practically unrecognizable even to myself. That was fine by me. When I left the bathroom, I found Madarami standing by the door. His hood pulled, o oh, pulled low over his eyes. Yikes. I pulled on my coat and together we left the room. You know what I want to know is like, when Madarami runs into us the first time where we don't know it's him. Die! I want to know why he suddenly was just like, he just beat up Toa and I'm just like, Hello? <laughs> I wonder if Ray is gonna show up. You know what I'm saying? Following a hard punch to the nose, the man went flying and hit the ground flat on his back. Late that night, Madarami was strolling along under the moonlight when a deathmatch fighter challenged him. When Madarami, when Madarami whipped him out in one punch, his buddies got mad and charged in. But now, only Madarami and I were left standing. It was all over so fast, I could only stand there and watch it unfold. As the men groaned in pain, Madarami heaved a dramatic sigh. <sighs> I was inclined to agree. He dodged all their pathetic attacks and easily took them out. He didn't stand a chance. Not a single one of them managed to land a hit. Okay, yeah, so that was that was true. Yeah, send and he looked over his shoulder at me. When I paused to listen, I could make out footsteps mixed in with the usual hustle and bustle of the city. These footsteps were irregular, like the stumbling of a drunk, and they were slowly approaching. Madarami glanced around in search of the source, then smiled faintly. Ooh. 
Oh uh, gosh. Very nice. <laughs> what happened? What are these NPCs, man? The man was hunched over with both hands in his jacket pockets, muttering to himself as he stumbled along. Behind him stumbled a few more guys. Deathmatch group, perhaps, but not just any group. The man in the lead spotted Manorame, looked over and donned a twisted grin. Very good. So good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Every time a new NPC shows up, I'm just like, how ugly they gonna be? And I'm like, dang, they really said. <laughs> oh, I like the dude's hair on the left, though. He's got a vibe. He's got some style on him. I don't know about the dude on the right, though. Uh, I, feel, I feel like he, you know, his aesthetics, his, um, Piercing aesthetic placements should could be could be better. You know. The men formed a loose circle around us. All of their eyes were dull and hazy, reminiscent of a different guy I once saw. Oh yeah, they're on drugs probably. The guy who slashed me on Cold Street. Druggies. <laughs> Thank you, Madarami. <laughs> Thank you. Before he could finish his sentence, Madarami decked him square in the face. Both hands clutching his face, the man staggered backwards and died. The other men be uh, began to throw a fit. But it was painfully obvious how this was going to play out. A few minutes later, Madarami and I stood surrounded by men collapsed on the ground. But Madarami wasn't too entertained. He cracked his neck with an, un with an unamused look on his face. As for me, I was out of breath. Madarami had handled most of them, but one of them decided he'd settle for kicking me instead. And since I couldn't fight in, in my current condition, Madarami ended up coming to my rescue. Uh. With a disappointed sigh, Madarami crouched down next to the ringleader. He rolled the guy onto his back and started uh, riffing through his pop, rifling through his pocket. Sorry. Eventually, he found what he was looking for in the inner pocket of his coat. It was a little plastic baggie filled with white powder. Madarami straightened up, ripped the baggie open, and dumped its contents onto the ground. <sighs> One of the men whimpered in disappointment. Madarami tossed the baggie, then continued his search of the rest of the men, dumping out any drugs he had. Well, these ones don't seem so bad, though. Yeah, these ones don't seem so bad. Like, these guys don't seem so bad. Yeah, you think that, honey, but... Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. The boss is dead. He walked straight over to me and grabbed my arm. Then he dragged me into the narrow alley. At approximately the halfway mark, he relinquished his grip on me. I glared at him. He grinned and licked his lips. What a time. <laughs> what a time. <laughs> his smoke swayed playfully. It's pissed me off. I didn't want to take orders from him. He was baiting me. If he wanted to grab me and use me like a toy, I could get into that. But no, he wanted me to volunteer myself. I didn't want to, and yet, deep down, I got a little thrill out of it. I was at my limits physically and mentally, and as a result, I had no self-control. This man was capable of giving me the pleasure I wanted. We were a perfect match. Ooh, that got spicy. My body was well aware of this. It found the temptation hard to refuse. He punched without hesitation. He fought to kill. And he enjoyed the violence from the bottom of his heart. Even if it resulted in his own death, he didn't care. They are very similar in that sense. Naturally, he didn't care if his opponent died either. That was the kind of game he played. His desires match mine on a fundamental level. It was impossible not to relate. Still, 
I didn't want to let him win. It was because I could relate that I refused to take his orders. Admittedly, in the past, I had felt comfortable with him, but even then, too much time had passed. I had changed. I didn't want to be his pet. I just wanted to exist. <sighs> As I stared back at him hesitantly, his smile vanished and he let out a sigh. <gasps> what again? Ugh, he's killing me. <laughs> we were getting somewhere. <laughs> the next instant he punched me out of nowhere, and I reeled. My skin burned hot where he punched me, and I felt a familiar thrill in my gut. Whenever I took a punch, it made me want to give back in kind. Now I take another and give another, on and on. Nothing got my blood pumping like trading full throttle blows. Anurame knew this. He was trying to seduce me into punching him back. As if he read my mind, he donned an arrogant smirk. This is exactly why I hate you. <laughs> Pressing under my breath, I charged straight toward- He has like no strength in him. I- <laughs> I don't- He dodged easily and struck back. It knocked a breath from my lungs and my vision went dark. Madarame was not the type to go easy on the weak. That knowledge was what enabled me to fight back as hard as I could. It'd be a miracle if I could even graze his cheek. <sighs> I'm in pain. <laughs> he pummeled me in the face and gut until I wanted to puke. He spat up blood and stomach acid and scrutinized Madarame cautiously. He was wearing his usual confident smile and, unlike me, wasn't even out of breath. So, so, oh no. As he teased me, his fist cut sharply through the air. Ow! I thought I'd just barely dodged it, but his next punch collided with my solar plexus and I doubled over. I couldn't breathe, suppressing the urge to bar if I clutched my stomach and staggered backwards. <laughs> Madarami says like says these things like it's really obvious. He's like, "Are you trying to die?" It's like he hasn't eaten for four days. Oh, you didn't last as long as I thought you would. He literally like passed out after trying to run away from like assailants, and Madarami had to force feed him like a piece of bread. And Madarami out here. Oh, even if they take off the collar, you can't run away. You so you thought he could fight you, like even for a little bit. I'm surprised Toa could throw one, one, uh, one fist at you, you know? <laughs> it's funny because... I should be, like, raising resentment towards Madarame, but I think the more, <laughs> I think the more we go along in this chapter, I don't know if it's Stockholm Syndrome, but, <laughs> but, um, very notoriously, I kind of... Every once in a while, I notoriously like a very scummy, scummy character. Um, let's put it this way, my favorite character in Squid Games is Song Wu. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, let's continue. <laughs> oh, I hate you. he spoke flatly, and then I sensed him moving. Clearly, he was planning to finish me off. Still. Doubled over, I barreled forward. My brain was switched off and I was operating purely on instinct now. I looked up, gritting my teeth, and clenched my fist. He's, oh, his sneering face drew near. Oh! The next instant, my sight dimmed. It felt like I blacked out for just a few seconds. The next thing I knew, my fist was touching his cheek. It only grazed his skin, of course, but for some reason, I still felt a rush. I was having fun. Naturally, right after that, I took a direct punch and fell flat on my back. My whole body ached, but I felt great. Yeah. 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 He straddled my hips and grinned down at me. 
Just then he grabbed me. Oh, okay. Chill. Daddy, chill. <laughs> Sorry. I shot him a reproachful look. You're saying this, but you're in Totoa. Okay? You the same. We are not different. Okay? <laughs> we are not different. It's not, we're not the same. It's, we are not different. Okay? You too, Mother Ami. <laughs> Only then did I notice. My own... Yeah. My own... <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna finish that sentence. So, yes. <laughs> I glanced at his crotch hovering just over mine and smirked. He snorted then buckled his hips against me. <laughs> My heart... Oh, okay. I'll see you in a hot minute, probably. <laughs> right against the fabric. So the sensation was intense. He enjoyed watching me squirm for a moment, then leaned down. A prick of pain flared up as he licked my cut lip. His hot tongue traveled up my cheek to my right eyelid. I could hear a wet laughing sound. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> Ooh. Okay. okay. Once again, I didn't notice it until he pointed it out. It must have happened after he punched me. Okay. <laughs> His whisper sent a, a shiver down my spine. After that fist fight, I was too worried to endure much more of his teeth. Oh no. <laughs> This was the same thing we used to do back in the old days. After an all-out fist fight, I would always get <laughs> and start looking for a hook. Oh, mercy. And a lot of the time, Mother Ame was right there. His violent sex was my idea of comfortable, but sometimes it pissed me off too. It always felt like he was playing me like a fiddle and I hated it. He always looked down on everyone around him. But for some reason, I was drawn to him, and he seemed to want me around too. Looking back, part of me must have liked that he knew me so well. <laughs> Madrami pulled off his coat, then ripped open my shirt. He buried his face in my bare chest and bit down hard on my nipple. <laughs> the sharp pain made me suck in a breath, but I didn't mind it. On the contrary, <laughs> Was only getting bigger. Oh boy, here we go, baby. Okay. <laughs> to hide my reaction, I gritted my teeth and turned my face away. No matter how hot it was, I didn't want him to hear me moan. He knew I was like this too. Uh, we'll find out. <laughs> With a meaningful grin, he bit down hard on my chest scar. <laughs> Without even getting dressed, he grabbed his discarded coat and retrieved his cigarettes and lighter. As I watched him light one up, I remembered the red and silver Zippo lighter. Apparently, it was in my possession once again. But before that, was Madarame using it? This was what I contemplated during my post orgasm bliss. Beyond the smoke rising from his cigarette, I could see a twisted sky pierced by dirty buildings. No clouds, no stars, no moon. Like the whole thing was painted black. Madarami tilted his head up to exhale the smoke. I could feel the chill of the asphalt as I lay there. It felt my, like my organs might freeze solid. That wasn't my problem, so I closed my eyes. When we returned from the deathmatch area, something didn't feel right. It wasn't that we were staying at a different place, it was that I wasn't upset about it. 
All the time I spent imprisoned, I felt I could never relax. Now I wasn't upset at Madarami at all. His presence felt natural, almost like we'd gone back to the good old days. Maybe we had. When he first kidnapped me, he told me to go back. At the time, I wasn't sure what he meant by that, but thinking back, maybe he wanted me to go back to the way I used to be. If so, then I guess he got his wish. We fought, we, <laughs> and now I remembered what life used to be. Oh, now I remembered what life used to be like with him. Was that why he brought me to the deathmatch area? Now I suspected maybe he broke my spirit on purpose, so I'd lose all self-control. I stir around, he put the collar on my neck. Chain rattling, I walked to the wall and sat down. Then I looked at the pastries and water bottles placed nearby. In the past, I outright refused to accept his charity. But now I found, I wasn't so posed. Mmm! Me too! <laughs> I too am baffled. Baffled, I found myself subconsciously reaching for a pastry. My hunger and thirst had already exceeded their limits to the point that I no longer felt them. I opened the pastry wrapper and took a small bite. The hunger I had grown numb to instantly intensified, and I quickly started eating the rest. After I finished the pastry, I cracked open a bottle of water and drank. My body felt so much better with its hunger and thirst sated. Thirst sated. Third. <laughs> right as I downed about half of the bottle, I sensed a pair of eyes on me. And Arami was sitting in his chair, watching me with a grin on his face. Oh. His smug satisfaction pissed me off, and I looked away. Umaika. No. <laughs> I could tell he was teasing me, so I shot him down hard. He didn't say another word after that. As I ate my second pastry, I gazed out the window. There was a tiny hint of light on the horizon. The sun would soon rise. Just then, I thought about my old life at the clinic. Aku would come upstairs to wake me, and I would get dressed. Oh, and I'd get dressed and come downstairs, and they would start chatting cheerfully. But now, I preferred this emptiness because this was the person I truly was. As I gazed out at the dawn, I found myself in the mood to wax nostalgic. Slow damage. Interesting. So in this route, Tolo regains his memories and he realizes who he was and who he is now. And they merge. Well, not really merge to the same person. But you know, it's like he, he kind of finds some sort of peace with himself. And that also includes finding peace with being next to Madarame. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> I don't have my, I don't have much to say. This this route is putting me through it. So, <laughs> the next day, Madrami and I went back out to the deathmatch area. We were killing time again, but rather than wiping out all the fighters by force, we were basically just playing around with anyone who picked a fight with us. Madrami wiped out two whole teams, then headed down the alley with an unamused look on his face. We turned corner after corner until we reached a slightly wider alley. And that was when I got a strange feeling in my chest. It was an instinctive gut reaction with no basis in reality. Then a figure appeared from around the corner. Oh, around the corner up ahead and Madarami stopped short. Likewise, the figure froze motionless. Tua. It's Ray! The voice pierced my heart like a knife. It's Ray! Oh no, this isn't good. This can't be good. This is not a good situation. No, no, no. This is not a good situation. This is a bad situation. 
It was red. Tua! He stared at me shocked and perplexed. Then he looked at Madarame. Madarame? Hontoni. He whispered hoarsely. How did he recognize Madarame when the two of them had never met? Well, actually. Mm. Okay, maybe I'm off days. <laughs> it says Taco must have shown him a picture or something. In Ray's route, though, he mentions that, like, he used to, like, follow around Toa a lot. And if that's the case, if Madarame and Toa have known each other since, like, they were children, and they had always been around each other until that incident, then wouldn't Rei probably know what Madarame looks like? That's my assumption. I don't know if that's the actual continuity of the writing. I don't know if the writers between- I don't know if it's one writer or that- actually, I should- Look that up. I didn't pay attention to the credits because I'm. You know, I was gonna look that up later. But I, anyway, I, well, once I finish the game, you know. But I, anyway, let's continue because I, I'm gonna sound. <laughs> let me not. Let me not. Let me not think too hard. Let's let's continue. <laughs> I'm gonna let the game tell me <laughs> if if it wants to. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Madarami looked at me. Yes. <laughs> I looked back at Ray silently. I used to spend every day looking at that face, and now it felt like centuries had passed. But at the same time, something didn't feel right. It almost felt like... Like Ray was an alien from another planet. Like there was an invisible line in the sand between him and the two of us. No, 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 no. Please. Madarami seemed to take the hint from the look on my face. Oh yeah, I bet you have. Ray spoke warily as he tilted his head down. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. I'm like afraid. I okay, this is where I have actual fear because I don't know what's gonna happen now. Is Madarame gonna be afraid? Madarame was in the area where he saw many people. He was always looking for people. Wow, he was. Would... Madarame was was very thorough, apparently. Then Ray shot a piercing look at Madarame. After a long glare, he looked back at me. Oh, this makes me sad. <laughs> this makes me sad now. But you know what? It'd be like this sometimes, you know? <laughs> Instantly, a response came to mind. I can't. If you'd found me a few days ago, maybe things would have been different. Now, still, part of me was torn. The memories of my life with him and Taku were played in my mind. Where did I belong? Doa! <laughs> about to be real sad. They called my name urgently. I looked at my feet and pursed my lips. I couldn't speak. I didn't know what to say or how to express how I felt. Yaruka. Oh. Madarame asked unsmiling. Doa. Ray called my name again in a beseeching tone. Madarame exhaled and cocked his head in annoyance. <gasps> no! As he spoke, he turned to face Ray. I barely managed to get the word out. Madarame looked back at me, almost offended. Well, I mean, maybe. <laughs> he could try, you know? <laughs> As I fell silent, his gaze hardened with contempt.
With that flat declaration, he turned on his heel and walked off like he'd lost all interest. I started to walk after him. The desperate shriek stopped me in my tracks. I looked back to see that Ray was on the verge of tears. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... <laughs> it's like you have to walk away from the house. It's made me real sad, but... Yeah, Toa, Toa has basically had like a mental... La not like a mental lapse, but he's basically having like... <sighs> I, I want to say an identi identity crisis, but also an existential crisis for the most part. Um, Toa has remembered things that, like, are unpleasant, um, and something that he, you know, doesn't like to remember. Um, he's, en he's essentially going, uh, he's reprocessing trauma because now he remembers it. Uh, at least that section, you know what I'm saying? So, um... Like Toa said, it's just like, now he feels very displaced. So he's like, well, now he feels okay. Like he feels kind of like proper staying with Madarame in like these weird, <laughs> these dilapidated buildings. Um, but the moment Rei shows up, it's like, it should be like, oh, it's Rei. But like Toa is struggling now internally because he's just like, well... He feels, he just feels, he just now feels very displaced and he's not sure if that's where he should really be, you know, so. I knew I was going to get sad the moment Ray showed up because I knew Ray was going to show up because there's no way they were going to hang out in the deathmatch area, walk around forever, and Ray wasn't going to show up, you know, but Ray basically like lives there, you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> Okay, okay, come on, Toa. At least, at least say I can't. You know, don't just be silent. I'll be sad if he's silent. Well, he just might be silent because this is pretty sad, so... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> His loud voice echoed down the dark alleyway. But... Couldn't. Didn't feel right. This didn't belong there anymore. Tola! <sighs> Sad. Okay. We kept walking. Nande madarame ni tsuite iku no? Anta. Nande sonna ni funuke chatta no yo? Marude jujun na inu mitai janai. Tola! Yeah. They scream cut through the darkness, echoing off the clusters of empty buildings. As I followed after Madarame, I could feel something stuck in my throat. So I didn't look back. Ooh, that was rough. Oh man. Back out of Ma Madarame's hideout, I sat against the wall with my knees tucked under my chin. The rain created a peaceful ambience. Uh, am ambience, sorry. <laughs> ambience. Oh, I'm used to saying that. With cold human air that pierced my skin. Meanwhile, my mind replayed those events over and over, ceaselessly. That was what Ray had shouted after me back in the alley. And now it had firmly planted a thorn in my heart. Little pet dog. Is that how everyone else saw me? The thought made me scoff at myself. I had always despised authority and anyone who sought to control me. Why did I choose to stay with Madarame? Had I given up and accepted my imprisonment as the easier option? I could feel Ray's comments slowly getting under my skin. Mm. 
As I sat there with my face buried in my knees, something struck me hard. Can you chill? <laughs> I know it's Balarame. I wasn't expecting it, so I hit the ground without bracing for impact. I looked over to find Madarami standing there disgruntled. Apparently, he had kicked me. It's mother Neboketer Tsumorida. Sorotomo Hontoni Noga Sotanoga. Ekagen Kimero. Oh, okay. What choice? I shot him a questioning look. Mukoka Kochka. Kimero to eat. Oh, okay. This or that. For a second, I didn't understand what he meant. But then the implication slowly sank in. Him or them. He wanted me to choose one or the other. I mean, that's true. I mean, yeah, does he get a say? Like, <laughs> it's like he doesn't really have options, you know. I scoffed sarcastically. And he slammed his shoe down onto my head. Can you? Give me a moment, Madarami. <laughs> he pressed my face hard against the gold concrete. A sharp pain shot through my right eye, oh, my right socket, and I grimaced. Then it started to burn hot, and warm fluid trickled out from between my sunken lids. He seemed to have noticed that I was bleeding, but he didn't let up. He spoke flatly, then pulled his shoe away. But just as I was released from the pressure against my skull, he grabbed me by the collar and hoisted me up. His eyes stared at me coldly as the fabric squeezed against my throat. <sighs> oh, oh, man, this chapter is rough, huh? <laughs> this, obviously. I couldn't get the words out. Ah! When I read my gaze awkwardly, I, he punched, <laughs> punched me. <sighs> and he grabbed me by the throat, and I figured he was going to strangle me, but instead, he removed my collar. Hora, go you. What? Oh no. They're gonna fight again. <laughs> With a taunting grin, he held up the collar like he was rubbing it in my face. Okay, he has a lot more strength now, so. <laughs> in that instant, my brain switched off. On autopilot, I rose to my feet and lunged at him. He dropped the collar, then dodged my punch and struck back. I blocked his punch, held my ground, and swung again. Once again, he dodged my attack, then punched me in the gut. Naturally, I staggered, but I didn't back down. All the emotions I had bottled up came rushing out uncontrollably. No matter how many punches I took, I didn't go down. Like a robot, I got back up and tried again. This is what my life was like back when I was with Matarame. If you picked a fight with me, I would take the bait. Or sometimes I was the instigator. I had nothing worth living for, so I wasn't afraid to die. That's why I fought with everything I had, and I expected the same of my opponents. After I left the Takasato Gloomy, however, my competitive spirit died out. I avoided fighting, and if anyone hit me, I just let them. The peaceful boredom had eroded my aggression. I grew complacent at rock bottom. But now, Madarame had brought me back. He provoked me with an air of smug confidence. <gasps> I endured blow after blow, but it didn't stop me. Whenever I managed to graze his cheek with my fist, his eyes would twinkle playfully. He was having fun. But my stubbornness offered no immunity from the pain, of course. A blow to the face sent me tumble oh stumbling backwards and I fell on my booty. <laughs> you know, usually I feel a little worse when um characters get beat up. I still feel bad when Toa gets beat up, but um 
because Toa is Toa, you know, and he explains that like he's he's into getting beat up. I feel I feel a little less bad, but I still feel bad. So you know, at least in this case, it's not like. To be fair, even though Madarama really got me got like got me all up in the grill, um Madarame is doing things that Toa doesn't completely hate. Like Mad this is just like how they used to be, apparently, according to the memories and pieces we have right now. Apparently Toa and Madarame were like that's just I guess <laughs> this sounds so terrible. This is their love language. I don't fighting, I don't <laughs> Oh, oh man, this game. This game puts me through, bro. Uh, okay. okay, let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. The only sound was that of my labored breathing. When I didn't get up, he stopped. Silently, he looked at me with his emotionless eyes. Then he looked away and walked to the corner of the room. Dubiously, I watched closely as he grabbed something. Then he walked back and dumped the items in front of me on the floor. My old clothes and shoes and something else on top. My cell phone. Oh, interesting. He spoke flatly, then walked to the table and sat down in his chair. Then he leaned back and pulled out his phone like he wouldn't oh like he couldn't care less about what I did. I sat there blankly for a moment watching him. Then the gears of my head started turning, and I finally processed what was going on. Put simply, he was kicking me out. Had he lost interest in me? Apparently so. Why else would he take my collar off? Nanda. Are we here? <gasps> we're here, we're here, we're here! Okay. Let's go! I'm gonna get you. Man, that that blue smoke is so aggressive, so <laughs> can't tell. Let's find out for sure. Positive. Uh, let's see what I get. I might get this. Might be the first time I get a bad ending because the Madarame is rough. Okay. Because I can't decide. Oh, okay. <sighs> okay. Yeah. I, I'll do it. I'll push at him. Well, I thought, man, it just gets harder because I was just like, man, Taku grew up to, to crack, and then Ray was like super tough because he didn't even talk, and now here I am, at Madarame. All my training for this, I'm so gonna fail because <laughs> I'm really bad at interrogation. <laughs> um, uh, says keep talking but like I feel like that's so like that's not gonna get him to talk no, let's just try hmm. if I get the bad it is what <laughs> too hard to read I don't understand the way you think <laughs> you don't know yeah but, oh um fight no fight Negative. Your fault for expecting too much. <laughs> You're always like this. You never say a word. You never change. Clamp. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, my God. This is so hard. I <laughs> it's like so... <laughs> You're the problem here, not me. It's me! <laughs> Sorry. 
and the problem is me. Okay. Initiate. How long are you planning to hit me this time? Okay. Huh. I have to use Boy. this because modern army's not talking. Like, how long are you planning to give me the silent treatment? Yes. I, I, I'm just gonna attack him. Oh, this is rough, the glove. You don't know. <gasps> oh, he's still doing it. Um. Clamp! I don't. <laughs> What's your problem? Oh, this is gonna be really hard. Okay. I don't know, because you can't not say anything to him, because he's not saying anything in the first place, so I have to, like... It's like I'm provoking... It's like I'm poking a wall! Hurry up and start talking. What's so great about rotting away in a web of lies? Oh! Uh -huh. huh? What is he talking about? Mm. No, talk... I, I can't wait, Four. he's not gonna answer! <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <sighs> oh, have mercy on me. This is just an act, isn't it? You're trying to confuse me. I never realized you were that far gone. I sensed a hint of annoyance in his tone. <gasps> ah! Ah! Come on! Oh gosh. What is it? So. Kaka. Uh, ah. Uh, so it's Taku? Interesting. Okay. タクを痛めつけた理由は最後に面白いことを教えてやる。あの男はお前に嘘をついてる。嘘。あ、お前はずっと欺かれて生きてきたんだよ。うん。お前が今まで嘘に嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。嘘。
After all, I'd spent years believing him to be dead. I was just going to go back to that. End of story. <gasps> I sucked in a breath as my right eye socket started to ache sharply. I touched it and my fingers came away bloody. I must have started bleeding when Madarame hit me. Shaking off the pain, I turned and walked away. Oh, mercy. I don't remember how I found my way out of the deathmatch area and back to the clinic, but the next thing I knew I was standing at the front entrance. Through the glass door I could see that the lights were all off and the place was locked. So I walked around to the side entrance and used my key to let myself in. The clock on the wall indicated 3 a.m. Naturally, no one was around. Oh boy. I went upstairs and walked into my apartment. The main room was shrouded in darkness. It looked like no one had lived here in years. This didn't change when I flipped the lights on. I didn't really feel like I was home. In the past, I would have switched the TV on straight away, but not this time. There was a restlessness in my chest that put me ill at ease, almost like I wasn't supposed to be here. I laid myself down on the sofa without taking my coat off. Gazing up at the ceiling, I took a deep breath and slowly exhaled. When I closed my eye, my mind conjured the last I'd seen of Mararame. He sat on his chair like it was a throne, arms folded, smiling faintly. Then our conversation replayed in my head. He told me Taku was deceiving me. Was he even telling the truth? Or was he trying to confuse me? Why did he suddenly decide to let me go? Knowing him, maybe he simply got bored of me? <laughs> I sat up and leaned back against the sofa. Then I pulled my phone out of my coat pocket. This was the first I'd seen of my notice since Madarame kidnapped me, and the screen was filled with dozens of missed calls and messages. The date indicated it was indeed the start of a new year. The fact that the battery hadn't died suggested Madarame had kept it charged for me. Hey! I called Ray. Oh. だらめから逃げられたの。嘘。本当嘘をつく必要がない。そう。そう。That's <笑> Let him come over, cause I, I have emotion. I don't know what. Yeah, I'll study. Oh, <laughs> all right. Okay. Demo. Scotchy, yes. Wakata wa. Moshi, ugokeru nara, nani ka tabete, suibu mo tote. Ah. Denraku shite kurete, arigato. Sore ja, oyasumi nasai. The call ended there. I stared down at my phone screen in silence. The reason I called him was not to let him know I was home. I just wanted to think about someone who wasn't Madarame for a change. Now that I was back here, I needed to forget about him ASAP. I needed to get my life back to the way it was before our reunion. Next, I started to call Taku. But just then, as if on cue, my phone lit up with an incoming call from Taku himself. He paused there, hesitantly, like he had something he wanted to say. Oh, so he's just gonna tell me. Okay, work. Come on, girl. Do you believe in love? Sorry. <laughs> you can tell when I'm losing my mind because I start saying saying that one line. 
Sakaki さんには連絡したか。Sakaki、だるけん、Sakaki。なんなら、俺から連絡しておくわ。なあ、he can suck it is what he can do。いや、自分で連絡する。そうか。<笑>お前も疲れてるだろう。明日。Naturally, sleep remained elusive. My body was exhausted, but my mind was wide awake. Just then, an old memory rose up in the darkness. A memory from the big fight. Kono and Madarame were facing off. In the dream I had, I was pretty sure I could hear them talking, but when I woke up, I couldn't remember. What did Tono say to Madarame and how did he respond? <laughs> Oh, he doesn't remember.、Oh, darn it, Toa. That was important information. <sighs> I was craving booze, so I reached down to the floor, but my usual bottle was gone. Taco must have put it back in the fridge while I was gone. I let out a defeated sigh. <gasps> Gumi times Happy New Year. Friction with Tas- Takasato Gumi. What exactly happened during the inter. Intra organizational conflict. Happy New Year, everyone. Chief Editor AZ here. AG. Is that. That's funny. Okay, sorry, like AG. AZ. AG. Because it's AG. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Keep an eye. All this time, I was just like, I. Oh my gosh. It took me three chapters. The stress is real, apparently, because it took this. Ch- okay. This year I'll be serving up even more hot gossip and insightful commentary free of charge. Okay. All right. In the end, I lay awake all night long until the sun rose the next morning. Slow damage. Man. At some point. Must have passed out. Eleven thirty-two a.m. Toa's altelier, altelier. Excuse me, altelier. Slowly, I opened my eye. I didn't consider it sleeping, since it was basically just my brain performing a hard reset. I slowly pushed myself up into a sitting position. And I noticed the bandages on my arms and legs. Taco and Ray must have applied them while I was unconscious. Me, 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 Yeah, I mean, it's true. He probably, he probably should eat more、um, because Toa has like nothing, like no strength in him, honestly. <sighs> he looked at me in concern. Yeah, like. いろいろ買ってきたから食べ物と飲み物は大丈夫だと思うんだけどいやだちょっと What? What's what? He changed tack mid sentence and crouched out the side. 首の傷 Oh yes, the collar marks. <laughs> Neck marks. Maybe my brain wasn't working. I couldn't process what he was talking about. Then a few moments later it clicked. Collar? Huh? Kubiwa? Do you cut up? 
そのままだよ首輪をはめられてた何それひどい完全に犬扱いじゃない鎖もついてたからな<笑> Sorry, I just realized the, the kind of awkwardness and borderline absurdness of this conversation because you know, Ray is very worried and like Ray, you know, Ray hasn't seen Toa in a while and Toa、um, has definitely lost a lot of weight so he probably looks like like Madarama is it? Like he probably looks like a corpse. Like, because he's not eating, he's not really drinking, like, he's not, like, he's not doing too much, you know? He's not doing too hot. You know, Toa was essentially, like, I think, what's the best way to say it? I think, I don't want to call it a relapse, but it's like Toa, because of his memories, like, snapping back into place. Like I said, it's essentially, um, Him reprocessing the trauma, but also not really processing it because he remembered that Tono shot Madarame and Kaga. He doesn't remember the conversation that he heard. He knows that he stepped in to like save Madarame from being shot.、Um, he was still shot. <laughs> but. Um, Toa ended up losing his eye that way. So that's how, like, he just knows that, those details, but he doesn't know that conversation that he mentioned about Sakaki. So,、um, I'm curious what Taku has to say.、Um, so, Toa essentially has, like, a lot of amnesia、um, because of all the trauma. So, it's not just from when he was a child, it was also from that, the inter Takasato Gumi fight. Uh, you know, all that, all that jazz, so. Hey, let's continue. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny, but Ray clapped both hands to his mouth in frozen horror. Oh, sorry, I, I lost track, but、um, I also wanted to say really quick, but yeah, so the, the absurdness of it all is that、um, Ray, you know, is, is again very, very worried, so Toa finds this really funny. You know, because he's just like, I mean, it's whatever. But in reality, yeah, it's like Toa didn't eat for like days and days and days and days. And then he would just get beat up by Madarame, you know, and then like force fed, and all, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> Terrible. And then they end up like, you know, getting frisky with it. And they go out and fight dudes. All that jazz. It's like very, yeah, it's like a very, um, again, it's very absurd. And so, of course, like, Ray is like horrified. But Toa is just like,、oh, this, whatever, it's fine, haha, hee hee haha, right? Um, but yeah, it's so, it's so like, it's kind of, absurd. it's a little absurd, you know? And it's like, um, that's probably why Toa is also feeling like a sense of like, um, displacement. Because now Toa knows. Because he knows everything, now he feels unfit to return to the life he had, even though right now he's trying real hard to do it. You know? So. Because he's trying really hard to forget Madarame, which again, you know, understandable because it's Buck Wild in here, but, you know. Anyway, let's continue. What is that? ひどすぎるわ逃げられて本当によかったテクニックリアイディンエスケープアドオーアイワストスタウトトア大丈夫かタクー You got a lot to tell me, homie The door opened and Taku walked in For a second, I didn't recognize him But not because he looked radically different or anything like that. My brain just failed to perceive him as Taku. This didn't happen with Ray since I'd already encountered him in the deathmatch area. Apparently, my old life would take some getting used to.、Uh. I answered curtly. My brain wasn't functioning properly. Maybe I was tired. <clears throat> so, I'm not going to be here. どこからどう見ても栄養失調だ脱水も起こしてるだろう
His expression clouded over. With that, he hurried out of the room. Judging by their reactions, it was Taku who treated my wounds. Then I remembered what Madarami had said about him. That he was lying. That he was hiding something. I tried to tell myself it didn't matter. But it did nothing to ease the restlessness inside my chest. I want another tea! Give me the tea! A few moments later, Taku returned with the IV drip stand and all. <laughs> He sat down on the sofa, grabbed my left arm, and disinfected the injection site. And he stuck the IV in me like he'd done it all a thousand times before. <laughs> oh boy. He chuckled and taped the IV needle to my arm. You saw me. Nodding, Ray looked at the coffee table. I bought some food and On the table sat a plastic container with two big rice balls inside. Oh. Oh, he's having like. Toba's gonna have like a. He's gonna have a panic attack. <laughs> the two of them fussed over me to the very last minute, then finally left the room. Silence fell, and it came with sweet relief. Normally, the silence always made me anxious, but not anymore. On the contrary, being alone meant I could finally relax. Weekly, I looked over at the IV stand. Clear fluid dripped rhythmically, traveling through the tube and into my arm. It was just so quiet. I leaned back against the sofa and closed my eye for a while. I glanced over at the coffee table. Today's rice balls caught my eye. Slowly, I sat upright. Using my non-IV hand, I reached out and grabbed one from the plastic container. I thought maybe if I flipped the script and acted completely out of character, I could adjust to my new life a little faster. So I took a bite. Familiar favor spread on my tongue. It was inarguably good food. And yet, this only made me all the more restless. Something wasn't right. Something was off. Reflexively, I rubbed the bandage on my neck. Still feel the residual pain of the collar. Unable to sit for a moment longer, I rose to my feet. The IV tugged me back. I yanked the needle out of my arm. <gasps> no! The injection site stung, but I didn't care. I wanted out of here. Maybe some fresh air would keep me calm. I grabbed my phone and checked the time. Roost wasn't quite open yet. One of the places I'd miss most. Maybe I'd feel better if I went back to my old routine. Anything seemed better than sitting around in here. I spurred forward by a feeling I couldn't name. I hurried for uh I hurried from the room. Ooh, boy. Five oh two. The only person at roost was the manager. Evidently, no one felt like drinking so soon after New Year's. When I walked in, he looked at me in surprise. Toku. I walked to the counter and sat down. I was kidnapped. <laughs> it was a long story. Now, no, but you know, it'd be what it be. He didn't dig any deeper than that, just smiled softly. What will we have, Tella? Whiskey. <laughs> he nodded, grabbed a glass, and got to work. While I waited for my drink, 
I glanced around, then pulled my cigarettes and Zippo lighter from my coat pocket. The place was still dim and quiet, just as I remembered it. Somehow, it was a bit more comforting than my room. I took it all in. Oh, as I took it all in, there was a quiet thunk as the manager set a glass down in front of me. I took a drag from my cigarette and set it on the rim of the ashtray. Then, exhaling smoke, I grabbed the glass. The flavor of the alcohol was familiar to me, as was the taste of the nicotine. It was reassuring. Ohayou gozaimasu! Te... Toa! At the sound of my name, I looked over to find that Ray had arrived for a shift. He rushed over and surprised. Mo, de no, but... Demo... <laughs> まだあんまり顔色が良くないわよ。もう少し部屋で休んでた方が良かったんじゃない。You know, I really need talking to like. <laughs> so I'm just like <sighs> Now that I know, I'm just like I'm like y'all need to be telling the homie what it what it be, you know. I need to know. I'm nosy. I'm tired of being left in the dark. <laughs> Trying to get a get a look at my face. I recoiled and put some distance between us. Oh. oh. His expression turned guilty. Yeah. Even I could tell my voice was hard. Play it off, I sipped from my glass. And I felt my anxiety return in full force. Something was deeply wrong. Restlessly, I set my glass down and took a long drag for my cigarette. <sighs> the instant I exhaled, however, Madarami's face flashed at the back of my mind. His unrepentant arrogance, his smug grin, his feral eyes. <gasps> oh! <gasps> a tingle shot down my spine. My palms began to sweat, and my fingers went cold. Something was wrong. I didn't belong here. I needed something more intense. Uh oh. Muttering under my breath, I set my cigarette on the rim of the ashtray. Then I downed my drink. Ray looked at me dubiously. I swallowed quietly. It wasn't my world. Staring at the floor, I gently reached up to my throat. That collar and chain had once tied me down. At the time, I thought I hated it, but now... Oh. All of a sudden, the room began to spin, and I braced myself against the counter. I almost like Madarame... Oh, almost like Madarame had hit me again. His punches always turned my world upside down. Whenever I took one to the gut, my breathing would hitch. The intense pain would make me wonder if he crushed my internal organs. With his emotionless sneer, he would crush me mercilessly. Whenever I fought him, I felt like my whole life was on the line. It was so raw and seductive. Every breath was a sweet whisper. Every drop of blood, a kiss. The pain would make my whole body scream, and the impact would throw my brain until it went numb. Matarame showed me what true pain felt like, and... Tua. Oh boy, this is gonna get rough. Ray timidly called out to me as I sat there frozen, hand on the counter. But I wasn't listening. Instead, I shot to my feet, the back of my neck. No, all of it felt like it was on fire. Good. I stumbled over to the door like the drunk I was. Dua! I could hear him calling after me, but I didn't look back. Mm. Oh boy. Oh, here we go. Outside, I slid along the wall and staggered into a narrow alley. After a few steps, I clung to the wall and tried not to collapse. <sighs> I exhaled feverishly and reached down to touch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Once I finally caught my breath, I pushed against the wall to straighten myself up. I thought rubbing one out would make me feel a little better, but my loins still ached. In the end, my body refused to be satisfied by half measures. Mere fantasies weren't enough. I wanted someone to tear me to shreds, and I didn't care who. No, that wasn't true. I wanted it to be Madarame. Oh boy. With a self-depreciating sigh, I readjusted my clothes. Just then, my phone buzzed in my pocket. But I was too lazy to check it, so I left the alley and started walking. Oh boy, we are going through it today, kids. The bridge! As I headed back to the clinic, I heard a car engine roll up behind me. Is it Sakaki? Or Tono? Anybody. It's probably all these people I hate. <laughs> it caught up to me and came to a stop. You, Toa. I'm sick of you. The driver's window rolled down to reveal. Oh no. In an instant, my post orgasm haze, or orgasm haze was gone. Get out of my face, dude. I glanced behind him into the car, but didn't see any of his lackeys. Otherwise, Tono wouldn't be driving. Oh, what could Tono want at the clinic? About what? At this, I frowned. Talk about what? Exactly. You tell him, BB. What? What? I turned to leave, but then heard a metallic click. Are you kidding me? A shiny black cylinder extended out from the car window. So, Aserna. So Aserna. <sighs> His eyes were cold and hard. I stopped and waited for him to continue. Sure enough, my suspicions were correct. Madarame おさまるも、もう収まらないだろう。he gazed at me pensively. Why? Why do I have to go to your place? I hate you. I hate you. I don't want to be near you. Oh, Saku gonna reveal that he's making that weird drug. Okay, so yeah, Taku is still making that weird drug. No! <laughs> he scoffed. Oh, you're starting to sound really gross, and I'm not. I'm not about that. I don't want to talk about it. His eyes did, oh, his expression went blank. And his lips curled in a faint smile that didn't reach his eyes. I know he's not. I don't really like, like, I know. Like, he's a gangster too. Why is he talking about you? Okay, give me, give me the info then, Tono. This is the only reason I'm talking to you. Hmm. Sakaki's hiding something too. Or is Tono lying? Just then, I heard footsteps approaching. Oh, Toa. Tu. Are? 
河野さん珍しい取り合わせですねしかもこんなところで遠野さん、何してるんすか偶然、こいつを見かけたから声をかけただけだ。Uh... With that, You can actually watch him go, then let out a big sigh of relief. Ah, Tono san, yap, eh, Suki, Kincho Sta. Tono san was Shiro Kujichi, I see, but I'm not. Wakaru, Haragro, it's a kanji dio. Toso Kaki, but Boktachi, Jitsua, Murase Clinic, a go to Stetan this year. トワさんの顔でも見に行こうかって感じで<笑>まここであったから目標達成だなっていうかレイさんから聞いてたんすけどトワさん<笑>マダラメさんに捕まってたって話本当なんですか<笑>マダラメさんやっぱり生きてたってことですよね<笑>マダラメさんが生きてた What's up? Maji de? Honto da. So nasne. Honto ni. Ikite dansne. Oh, he's alive, alright. I actually would be surprised if Kaga is alive, but I'm pretty sure Kaga is like dead, dead, so. Igarashi smiled in amazement. Oh, ikite da no ga. So lia すげえな What Taro Mayu and AG all chimed in too, but none of them seemed as excited as Igarashi. Oh, you, you wanna suck that back in, Igarashi? What do you want to do with Igarashi? I know why. What do you want to do with Igarashi? I know why. It's a tower. Do you want to get out of the way? Do you want to get out of the way? Do you want to get out of the way? Do you want to get out of the way? No. クミがガタついてるところに戻ってきたならタイミングバッチリよあまりにもタイミングが良すぎるって話ですけどねトーノが新しい薬を作ってるって話知ってるか新しい薬なんだそりゃ新しいビジネスを始めるつもりらしいはあはあ古い体制を崩壊させるチャンスってことですね。遠野さん、昔からずっと言ってましたもんね。組の伝統を重んじるやり方は古いって。遠野さんの最近の動きが妙だって話は聞いてますけど。とはさん、それって誰から聞いたんですか。まだらめだ。まだらめ。まだらめさんか。Eiji put a hand to his chin in contemplation. Tono san ga hongkak teki ni ugoki dashi tara. Sakaki san to senso oko chau ne. Who's truth? That's absolutely true. Matchigai naku yaru daro. Tsuka, sore nerai daro. Mm-hmm. Tono san, sore Sakaki san ni renrak shimashi ta ka? Ah, no, Sakaki is a sus. Igarashi looked at me flustered. Yeah. Ore kara itto ki mashou ka? Uh, you probably should, but at the same time, I don't trust that man. Well, that's true. Yeah, I mean, you know, the whole world is in chaos. I don't know if there's any chance to get out of here. I don't know if there's any chance to get out of here. To the clinic we go. Kotaro slung an arm around my shoulders and pulled me close. So she o, so she o. Asa asa, okura nakutemo. You don't want to go. They're gonna go anyway. Don't say that. 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 Don't say
to spot him. Oh, okay. Do, 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 do. Oh boy. The group and I parted ways just outside the clinic. Like at my apartment, I pulled off my coat, flopped down on the sofa, and stared at the ceiling. I didn't feel like doing anything. I didn't even switch on the TV. Instead, I lay there in the same silence I used to despise. I was too busy trying to figure out how to shake the restlessness that plagued me everywhere I went. It was starting to take a toll on my mental health. I don't want to figure out what it is that I wanted, and no amount of thinking led me to the answer. Naturally, this was a very draining process, so I stared up at the ceiling like I was dead inside. As my mind blurred like a kaleidoscope, I thought back to what Ray said to me in the deathmatch area. I was not Manarame's little pet dog. I was just struggling to get over him, that's all. I just needed a little more time to go back to my old self. Eventually I would forget about Mararame and readjust to my life with Rei and Taku. <laughs> I highly doubt that, but okay. <laughs> the harder I tried to convince myself, the more I started thinking about Mararame's wicked grin. Digging the image from my mind, I rose to my feet. Then I reached out, grabbed my sketch pad off the coffee table, and flipped to a blank page. Not because I consciously wanted to draw, my body just grabbed it on, idle, uh, on autopilot. Mindlessly, I traced dark lines on the white canvas. My pencil started slow at first, then I began to pick up speed and strength until I was practically slashing at the paper. It was like my hand had a mind of its own. The lines curved back and forth, giving shape to the silhouette of a human figure. And that figure was Madhavarame. It wasn't clear at a glance. It was just sketching an outline of body parts. Half the page was buried in graphite. My pencil danced and soared until the tip dulled and I nearly punctured a hole in the paper. I sketched in silence, puking up all my frustrations onto the page. Then, I heard a knock at the door. It sent me back to reality for a second, but then I went back to my sketch. Ray walked in, noticed that I was drawing, and went quiet. He's in a mood. He watched me work for a while, then backed out of the room and softly shut the door. A short while later, there came another knock. This time, Taku peeked in. Like with Rei, didn't stop drawing. He kept thinking back to everything Madarane said. That man is deceiving you. Just then my head, my hand fell still. As I might to ignore it, it kept haunting me. So I figured I might as well ask him myself. I set my sketch pad and pencil down on the sofa, rose to my feet, and walked over to Taku, who looked at me in alarm. <gasps> Interrogation? Let's go, kids. Okay, let's see if I can get through this. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, my. You're lying to me, aren't you? Uso. I think if you can press at him right now, he's vulnerable 
Someone told me you're deceiving me. Mm -hmm. That's where I want to go. Um, <laughs> press him. Am I gonna break this hourglass? Yeah. I spit it out already. No, no. What? Okay. I'm gonna. Okay, we're gonna go. We're we're gonna break this hourglass. I'm pretty sure. Hurry up. No. Don't play dumb. Mm. What's okay? Positive. I don't know what's better because Talk. I made that one response made the glass crack. All right, then I'll say it. Oh. Oh, no, no. I talked to Tono. So. He said you're going to be helping him with his work. Let's go blunt. Let's go blunt. What are you helping with? Okay, I need to get that to the. Hmm. Ah. What are you trying to do? I don't want to break the glass. We need the. Uh, let's try. We'll use his own words to get uh, my break. I might break the glass. Giving me the silent treatment act. No, I. I'm not. Oh, no! Can't you tell me? Should we. Oh, I'm gonna break this hourglass. Guess I know how to interpret that silence then. Oh. <sighs> Are you acting like this to make me beg? No, of course not. Darn it! Madarami told me you've been lying to me. He did. Then you believe him? Positive. I don't know! If you can prove he's lying, then go for it. Surely you have more to say than that. Let's try. Uh, Surely you have more to say than that. Oh, so You're not going to tell me, are you? Positive. Let me guess, it's for my own good, right? <gasps> Got it. How do I get out Bad light. Kaga? Is it? I don't know. Kaga? Well, it's either this or. Kaga. No. Kaga no koto. Honto ni zanmen. That's not it. It's probably this. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't make sense otherwise. Okay, let's see what he's got. Lying to me. Uso to yeba. そうだな。お前の過去について。ずっと偽ってきた。
だが問題はないはずだお前にとって悪いことは何もないあくな嘘をついてたって話は本当だったのもういいかああ,あ<笑>それじゃあ戻るぞ I pulled out my cigarette, something else fell to the floor. A lighter. A zippo lighter. <laughs> it felt like a punch to the face. I picked it up, pulled out my coat, and left the room. It just wasn't right. When I saw the lighter, my worst suspicions were confirmed. I didn't belong here. It was too late for me to go back to the way I used to be. Reuniting with Madarame reminded me of the way things were when we were together. And that was what I truly wanted. I walked out through the back entrance, gazing up at the dark, stagnant sky. I took a deep breath and exhaled. Then I faced forward and pursed my lips together. I knew where I was headed. Okay. Oh my gosh. Let's <sighs> see. <sighs> okay. All right. So, ooh, that was a doozy. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of information. So, um, I haven't been talking as much in between this chapter because um, I knew Madarami's chapter would definitely cover more of Toa's past because up until now, we haven't really discovered what has been going on with Toa's past. And also, Toa apparently had one half brother and a sister, so you know, apparently they're both dead, so <laughs> oh, I cry, but um this this chapter slash route has been so good though. It has been so good. I'm I'm thoroughly like deep deeply immersed into the mystery and I think that's baller. Um <clears throat> like I said I don't know why I get to this chapter has made me so tired like physically but I am really enjoying um, the events of Mother Rame's route because they're very interesting um, I'm just so fascinated I'm fat even though I'm yelling at Mother Rame all the time because he keeps punching Toa um, I'm quite fascinated I would like to know you know um, I would like to know about Toa's past that he doesn't remember. Past, um, what do you call it? The other stuff. But, um, oh man, I don't know how much longer we have in this route. Um, I'm gonna try and see if, I'm gonna try and see if the next part we can try and finish up, um, finish up Madarame's route. Um, I don't know how much longer it is. That's the only problem. So if it takes like a couple more parts, that's fine. But if we can try and crush some of it tomorrow, uh, most of it um, in tomorrow's recording, um, I would be a happy, happy, happy guy. Uh, <laughs> but I've been enjoying this chapter so far, despite me uh, yelling at Madarame every two seconds. But um, yeah, it's been... Sort of time. I'm I'm very excited to meet Fujieda, but we have to finish our story with Matarame, and I'm quite curious how this particular route may end because it has been 
so queasy. So, but all right. Um, thank you guys again for watching. Um, do not forget my podcast. You can smooch though. A podcast about all things boys, love, and other related items is up on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, coming soon to YouTube Podcasts. Um, we are working on season two. Like I said, we are starting production and we are making it do, 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 go, 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 go. All right. Otherwise, thank you again. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay well. Let us hope next playthrough we, we get a homie, you know, <laughs> hopefully we get a homie next, next playthrough, or at least get pretty close to it. Because the closer I finish Madaram, the closer I get to finishing Madarame's route, the closer I get to talking to Fujieda. I've been waiting all this game time to finally be able to, to smooch smooch fall in love with that guy. So, all right. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I will see you guys in next time. <laughs> I will see you guys next time. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye. Night-night.